because of value-added tax have any appealed to you? I would say put everything on the table and subject it to the scrutiny that it deserves. The situation that we are in is as follows. You take the auto industry. Okay. You make a car, and it has about $2,000 worth of health care benefits in it. You send it overseas, and the full value of that car is taxed as it goes into another country, including the health care benefits. Right. They get a tax off of that, and they use that money to pay the tax they health care for their own workers, right, right. so their cars coming into our country don't have a health care component cost. So, so they have a competitive advantage. So they have a competitive advantage. So somewhere along the way, a value-added tax plays into that. Of course, we want to take down the health care right. cost. That's one part of it. But in, in the scheme of things, I think it's fair to look at a value-added tax as well. So With us and Bill O'Reilly in the At Your Beck and Call segment tonight, a shocking development. Fox News commentator Glenn Beck, chosen by Barbara Walters as one of the most fascinating people of 2009. We are not kidding. <laughs> With us, Mr. Fascination himself, Glenn Beck. What's Beck, not before fascinating? We, before What's we get not fascinating with me? About me. And I said that economically, we can bring the country back. But yeah. you have to do some discipline. You have to freeze spending. Mm -hmm. yep. You have to uh, have a national sales tax, 2%. Yep. What did you think about that? Um, I actually I made some notes. Excellent. I actually agree with you, except I believe it should be a VAT tax, 2% VAT. Value added no tax. More, no more than 2%. What's the difference uh, what, between a sales tax and a value sales added tax? tax? A value added tax goes through, or value added tax goes through absolutely everything. So it hits 2% on. Every piece. You make a car, somebody's making the radio, 2%. Somebody's making the... So it, it hits... So it, corporations it, pay it, too. all the way along the line. But you remember that it's corporations... It's an extraordinary amount of money. ...will always pass it on to the folks, which is yeah, why yeah, yeah. I like the sales tax better. Well, hang on just a second. But if you have a 2% VAT, um, you can um, pay things down awfully darn quickly. That's what right. I want is That's a... Right. What I want is... This is the part of the notes. I want a 2% uh, VAT. It goes directly to the uh, deficit... No more, no, than, no more than 10 years, constitutional amendment, and it must be um, with a balanced budget amendment, also must say that the books are combined. No longer emergency accounting, no, no, you longer, have to have it to no longer Social that. Security you're books not and everything else. You'd never get a constitutional amendment, but you would get it passed. Then I'm not going to give another dollar. Okay, but you would get it passed in Congress if, if we change next year. If Won't we change next year, give we'll do them it now. another dollar until I want hard, fast. I'll, I'm willing to pay down the debt. Right. But you've got to stop spending. You have right. to have a balanced budget, and that has to be guaranteed to go there. And if if well, politicians you could guarantee to go it in the law, you could guarantee that. But, but the constitutional also... amendment, then you have the states voting on it and all mm -hmm. that. It's not going to happen. Okay, I don't America, anymore. America in decline. Are we in decline? We are. Uh, we are at a fork in the road. I don't think we're fork in, in the decline. Road. Yes, we are either going to reset into something that we don't recognize, and I think that's where we're headed. Um, we're going to either reset there or we're going to restore. Or rebound. Restore. Uh, it needs to reset. I mean, look, we're at the point to where, man, the computer's running really slow. It's going to shut down on you. But I think so we are in decline at this point. After, after I think look, we're the, the second Bush term, the first Bush term was all right. We hurt us. And Obama now, with the wild spending, is hurting us further. Look, so Bill, I, I would to like to give you a t-shirt that says, Welcome to the Club. This is what I've been saying for a couple of years, that we are in deep, deep trouble. Okay, but and that's why you're the fascinating guy you are, because you <laughs> have been ahead. All right. Yeah. So, just recapping, you agree with me that we have to have some kind of tax to pay down the deficit. Uh, a small one. Only, no, no, no. Small one. No, no, no. Only... If they guarantee no more spending, if they cut right. the if they spending freeze we already it. have. Right, right. I mean, it's one thing to say, I'm going to freeze it. Uh, I'm going to freeze spending where it is. Well, in some departments, they've raised the spending by 150%. I think you have to exempt defense from that because you never know what's going to happen. But everything else, I agree. And then you don't, you, you don't agree with me that we're in decline already. You say we're in the proverbial fork in the road. We no, we are, we are either going to be, uh, I don't know the timeline, but um, 
we are either going to be over as a nation or we will dis or we will reset ourselves right. as a nation. Got it. Uh, but next November, there's going to be a big change in, in this Huge. country. There's going to be a big change. Daniel, welcome. You say that Americans should fight VAT to our last and dying breath. Why is that? For the simple reason that if we give the politicians in Washington a big new source of revenue and value-added taxes are enormous money machines for big government, we're going to get more government, more spending, more corruption, more waste. All the scandals that we see in Washington will be magnified if we give the politicians this honeypot of new revenue to buy votes with. Now, Europe, of course, already imposes the VAT. So what can we learn from their experience? Well, you can learn a lot. If you go back to, say, the mid-1960s and you look at the size of government in Europe before they had value-added taxes, the European governments weren't any more of a burden than what we had in the U.S. But over the last 40 years, as Europe put in value-added taxes, the burden of government spending exploded. As a matter of fact, I think that it's very safe to say that without the value-added tax, they would not have become the creaky and inefficient welfare states they are right now. And let's put this in terms that matter for your viewers. Per capita living standards are 30 to 40 percent lower in the European Union than they are in the U.S. And I think in large part, that's because the burden of government is so much bigger. And I don't want America to go down that path. Roger Altman, who I quoted to the Secretary, the former Deputy Treasury Secretary, says that the, the real answer in the long term has to be that we move towards a value-added tax, a sales tax. Yeah, I don't like a value-added tax, but I agree with Roger. I think that there is a fairly significant probability that the least worst solution to the problem will end up to be a value-added tax. And uh, Senator Charles Grassley, the Republican ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, has cite cited CBO estimates, Congressional Budget Office estimates, that your budget will add $9 trillion to the national debt over the next decade. Our debt, as a percentage of the economy, will grow in excess of 80 percent, a level also that has not been seen since this country was in World War II. That is a very, very high uh, level. And I know you believe that passing health care is essential to getting the deficit under control. But independent analysts also say that even with that, you're going to have to find new government revenues. The former Deputy Treasury Secretary Roger Altman said it is no longer a matter of whether tax revenues must increase, but how. Is he right? Uh, George, it is absolutely right. And I can make a firm pledge under my plan, no family making less than $250,000 a year will see any form of tax increase. Not your income tax, not your payroll tax, not your capital gains taxes, not any of your taxes. Raise taxes and I'll say no, and they'll push and I'll say no, and they'll push again and I'll say to them, read my lips. You know, they're, they're, they're all trying to reinvent themselves. They all, none of them have any core beliefs. There is nothing you can depend on. This is like George W. Bush running in 2000 for a, a more modest foreign policy. There is nothing any of them believe in other than trying to get a monopoly on some kind of power in Washington. If we don't stop extending our troops all around the world uh, in nation-building missions, then we're going to have a serious problem coming down the road, and I I'm going to prevent that. You know, these people sell off a little bit of themselves each time they stick out their hand and they agree to do something for somebody to collect the money. And by the time they're in office, there's nothing left. No wonder they have no core beliefs. Slice by slice by slice, they sell themselves away. Hillary, Hillary is, is no different. We are faced with a really, really tough challenge of people here that want to expand the war, continue to ruin brand name America, and uh, decapitalize this country. And I, I think it's time the American people wake up to the whole bunch of them, the R's and the D's alike. And we all remember from the Matrix that choice. You can take that blue pill and just coast through life, going to the shopping mall, watching TV, and not knowing what's going on. Or if you thirst for the truth, you take the 